Shalom. Welcome back to Iskar Forum. This is Wes Lawrence, and I'm with Elisha Vision Ministries, and uh, glad to have you with us. Uh, let's begin with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the news that's going on in the world this week and how it fits into Bible prophecy. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've called us to be sons and daughters of Issachar who understand the times and know what your people ought to do. Help us to see that, Lord, and see the world through your eyes and through the eyes of the scriptures. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Yehovah, we pray. Amen. Well, as usual, there's plenty of things going on to talk about. This is actually a very uh, important time in Israel's history as we move into the season of Passover. It begins a week from tomorrow night, uh, on April 14th, uh, here in the United States. Uh, and we uh, want to just kind of ramp up to that with some of the things that are going on in the world. We'll talk a little bit about the Red Moon prophecies, the tetrad of four uh, lunar eclipses that are going to occur on uh, feast days uh, this year and next year, and then, of course, the regular news. So let's get started with that. I usually like to start with my, my blog, my uh, commentary, which is called Elisha Vision Commentary. It's found at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. I invite you to go there and read the latest uh, posting and all the previous ones that are up there, too. The latest one this week I wrote on uh, honor killings. The title of it is Dishonor Killings. Uh, it's a sure is an oxymoron, a real contradiction to uh, talk about honor killings when uh, your daughter gets raped or attacked by somebody uh, sexually and then uh, you kill her to save your family's honor. Uh, couldn't be anything more perverse, I don't think, than that. So I talk about that in this blog and uh, I mentioned some statistics. I quote from a uh, an interview that was done on uh, the Kelly file, Megan Kelly's program on Fox News. Uh, it's, there's a link to the video of that. It's a 10 minute uh, interview that I really encourage you to, to uh, click on that link and, and watch that video. And uh, I zero in in the blog on the fact that uh, within the Palestinian territories, this uh, supposed new state they're developing for the Palestinians, uh, they've actually uh, been seeing a doubling in honor killings uh, uh, year over year in uh, the Palestinian area. And uh, it was 13 uh, of them in 2012 and then 26 last year. And, uh, and the rate it's going this year, uh, 2014, it actually would end up being 32. So it's increasing. Uh, and that's, that's the case of family members, fathers and brothers killing their own women uh, because of some perceived dishonor caused usually when when it's it's the woman being attacked uh, so it's pretty serious and the scripture the Lord gave me uh, and based on one of the sayings in among uh, these radical Muslims one of their sayings is uh, we're going to win because we love death more than you love life uh, of course that's a lie from the pit of hell they're not going to win <laughs> and uh, life is the name of being a a believer in the living God and his son, Jesus. The scripture I put in there was Proverbs 8, uh, starting at verse 32. Now, there, now therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from Jehovah. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. That's what God says. All those who hate me love death. So that's the bottom line uh, on that subject. And, and I do invite you, as I said, to, to check out the Megyn Kelly interview and, uh, and understand what's going on uh, with honor killing. That's a, it's a good overview. And, of course, read my blog and you know, see some details there. Well, in the news that is going on this week, there's uh, a lot going on. One of the main things that's uh, gone on this week is in regards to the peace process. Uh, the Palestinians have made an abrupt uh, change. Uh, well, I'm not sure how abrupt it was because it was pretty well forecast just a couple weeks ago when Abbas met with Obama in Washington and, and gave the famous three no's. <laughs> uh, no to recognizing Israel as a Jewish state. No to uh, giving up the the so-called right of return where five million Palestinian Arabs can come back and live in Israel. Not in the new Palestinian state, but in Israel. That was one of the demands that he 
uh, insisted on again with uh, said he wouldn't give that up and then the third one is uh, kind of the most odd one uh, he refuses to give up in, a, in any final peace treaty the uh, cessation of violence <laughs> he will not give up he will not cease violence even if they you know pro projecting that they get a, an agreement he still won't promise to get stop violence uh, so the question is what in the world are who's negotiating for what you know there's just nothing there and of course uh, the so the big event this week was that uh, that a boss uh, actually made the decision to start applying to UN and international bodies for recognition on a piecemeal basis trying to uh, get recognized as a state uh, without Israel agreeing to it without negotiations and the whole basis of the 1993 Oslo peace accords were that they uh, the only way a Palestinian state would be declared was if uh, if it was a the result of nego negotiations and a real peace treaty and so Arafat's basically saying, nope, I'm going to do it. There's a good article in the Times of Israel this week. It says, uh, Arafat style, a boss is playing with fire. In applying to join 15 international organizations, the PA president is trying to pressure Israel and the U.S. The gambit may backfire. Well, I'm sure it will. And uh, then there's another article on, uh, a very interesting article on Israel National News. Uh, Lapid, who's one of the Knesset members and leader of part of the coalition of Netanyahu's government, Lapid calls uh, the right messianic for rejoicing at the stop talks. Of course, the, the Zionists, the ones who were, that say that God gave Israel the land, uh, were, were glad to hear that the talks were failing because they wouldn't have to give up any more land. And, uh, and yet uh, Lapid says that uh, they're, uh, they're, they're messianic. In fact, uh, I, I thought that was particularly interesting uh, because uh, it sounds like to me that in even in politics in Israel, uh, the, the idea of the Messiah seems to be introduced more and more. Um, one of the, uh, I think it was Yahalon, the defense minister, uh, used that term in describing John Kerry's uh, misguided fervor and passion and commitment to try to make a peace treaty for Israel and, and the Palestinians. Uh, he said that he called uh, Kerry messianic. <laughs> uh, my point is, I'm glad to hear that term used. I use it more and more because we are in the messianic age. We're in the time where the Messiah is going to be recognized. And uh, I'm thrilled with that. And uh, so anyway, this this is just another example of that. And um, uh, I think uh, it gives us a, an idea of where uh, the Lord is working in Israel uh, on all sides to talk about the Messiah. Uh, Yahoo News has a story, Carry Out Does Himself in New Diplomatic Frenzy, talking about uh, all the times he's been to Israel and how he's uh, trying to do it again. He cut short a trip to, it, to Europe to come back, try to put it together this week, and then it fell apart, even though he did that. And all of his efforts uh, really do appear to be uh, futile, and of course, we've talked uh, all along about uh, the scripture uh, in uh, Ezekiel 18 that says they're building a wall with untempered mortar. It's a wall of peace, they're prophesying peace, but there'll be no peace because the wall doesn't have tempered mortar. Tempered mortar is mortar with enough water in it. If it doesn't, it dries the, the mortar dries out too fast and the, the wall will fall down. Well, that's what the Bible calls this false peace, uh, and of course, more the tempering of what you add to mortar to make it last is more water and uh, so we understand that the water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in Scripture so this is a peace process without the Holy Spirit uh, just not gonna happen <laughs> not gonna work another article in the Times of Israel says uh, despite Kerry's claim because immediately after uh, Abbas announced that he had signed and showed video of him signing all those papers Kerry says yeah but they weren't really into any UN related uh, organizations. Well, that was immediately disproven. Several of them were directly connected to the UN. And, and so uh, the headline says, despite, despite Kerry's claim, a boss has applied to join UN-related groups. Um, so when Kerry got back to the United States, he, he's now he's kind of in a, in a mode of trying to, to make, you know, to keep it from being total failure. And, and so now he's uh, saying that U.S. engagement in peace talks is not open-ended. 
After negotiations appear to fall apart, Secretary of State says Washington will evaluate what its next steps will be. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, that's, that's a kind of a veiled attempt, I think, just trying to cover his mistakes. And I don't believe there's going to be a successful peace agreement in this round of talks. Uh, rather, where I believe we're headed is to the Psalm 83 war, possibly an intifada, and so forth. So forth, several things happening. Uh, the context of all of that, I think, could be in the context of the, the tetrad of four uh, lunar eclipses that are happening on Passover this year and next year, and on Tabernacles this year and next year. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end today. Uh, there's an article in the Algeminer uh, news site that says former Israeli ambassador pins dead peace process on American wishful thinking. Says uh, Kerry smothered was smothered in a Middle East sandstorm. I want to quote that uh, headline from Yoram Edinger, former Israeli ambassador, uh, just because I like that phrase. <laughs> Kerry was smothered in a Middle East sandstorm. Uh, time after time, this has been going on for decades, the U.S. keeps thinking, uh, then they get messianic visions that I'm going to be the one who solves the Middle East, uh, and I'm going to bring peace to the Middle East, and they end up failing, and and because they don't understand, and particularly this administration uh, has has disconnected all the real reasons for the conflict because of Islam, uh, and uh, and they think it's just a matter of pe people with different opinions, and they can always be brought to the table and make uh, compromises. Well, that's not going to work in this situation because of the actual uh, death wish of the, uh, of the Islamics uh, in this situation. Um, so even after Kerry left, there was one more meeting uh, in uh, in Israel where they got uh, uh, Zippy Livni, the the Israeli negotiator, and Saeed Barakat, the Palestinian negotiator, together in a session that went actually to 4 a.m. in the morning last Wednesday, and and, uh, and the reports out of that that there were threats, uh, curses flying, and finally uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, Negotiator had to, uh, Martin Indyke had to just call the meeting off and says, we're not getting anywhere. And, and uh, so that was the, the latest development in those talks. There's another report uh, uh, sp speaking specifically about the uh, 15 uh, international organizations that Abbas just ap applied to. And they did send those applications into the organizations. Uh, this report actually says that at least 11 of the uh, 15 treaties Abbas just signed are the Palestinians are in flagrant violation of these treaties. So he just entered into a covenant with these 15 different organizations and immediately is in violation of 11 of them. And uh, that sets up uh, the next story from Israel National News. Uh, a, a lawyer of a non governmental organization in Israel uh, vows to hit Hamas and Fatah with charges of terrorism once Palestinians join the International Criminal Court. That's one of the things Abbas says he's going to apply to is to become a, recognized by the International Cr Criminal Court, the ICC. Well, if that happens, uh, this, this, there's going to be a, the headline is, Palestinians will face tsunami of legal charges at The Hague. And uh, even though that's what Abbas is threatening Israel with, so he's going to take Israel's leaders into the court, charge them with war crimes, the fact is, this group has been collecting for a year now uh, not only the list of war crimes that Abbas is, and his leaders have committed, but also testimonies from uh, people who have been victims of the terrorism. And of course, the textbooks of, Israel, of, of uh, Palestinians, uh, where Israel's not even on their maps and the geography, and where they're inciting their children to become haters and, and suicide bombers. And, the way they honor the terrorists and the suicide bombers, and they get paid double salaries of everybody else and by the Palestinian Authority with money that the West is supplying. And all of this is going on, so uh, he's probably bit off a lot more than he can chew in uh, in this effort uh, to try to get recognition. But we'll have to follow it as it goes and as it develops. Uh, <clears throat> meantime, this week there have been several more rockets fired into Israel, and uh, Israel Today reports this and also reports that Israel. Uh, responded uh, with airstrikes into Gaza and at least five different uh, targets. Uh, that's just kind of almost par for the course now uh, going on in Israel. 
<clears throat> Israel Today has another report just today. Uh, the headline is Jerusalem Nightclub Firebombed. And it says Palestinian Arab youth hurled several firebombs at a nightclub in Jerusalem on French Hill uh, neighborhood on Saturday night. Uh, one hit just outside the door of the establishment and failed to cause any injuries. Uh, last week, a Jewish motorist was attacked with stones and bricks in the same neighborhood. And other violence, a Palestinian airman was arrested at the entrance of uh, Ma'alele Adumim on Friday afternoon after police found him to be in possession of a large knife. So there's all kinds of these little incidents developing. And, and uh, what you can see in the same pattern as 2000 when Arafat refused the peace offer you know, of Rabin and Clinton, uh, which was a very generous offer for, to make peace. Arafat rejected it. He called for a million-man army to come and defend Al-Aqsa Mosque. And uh, I'm expecting that very same kind of thing, that same uh, scenario, the same game plan. Uh, I expect a boss to at some point call for an intifada and, and uh, things to break out more uh, in Israel. But this time I believe Israel is prepared and are going to be able to defend themselves. Um, then there's an article, another article in the Times of Israel, uh, U.S. Uh, Army Chief of Staff uh, Dempsey was in Jerusalem this week, and uh, after meeting with uh, with Netanyahu, he made the statement that uh, Israel uh, trusts that we will bomb Iran if needed. Uh, he said our clocks are more harmonized than they were on Tehran than the Iran issue. Uh, the the funny thing is though, it, that's the headline in one news source. Uh, the very next news source, Deb Kapil says. Dempsey claims Israel was satisfied the U.S. will use military option against Iran. Israel doesn't say this. <laughs> so it's another kind of whistling in the dark kind of thing where Dempsey is trying to say, like Obama's been saying all along, we're, we will bomb Iran if they ever get a nuclear bomb or the, you know, and so forth. And yet he doesn't do anything about it. And Israel decided some time ago that they'll have to do it, uh, they'll have to do it on their own uh, without uh, help. From the U.S. If the U.S. helps at the end, that would be great, but Israel is going to have to do it without them. Um, there's an article on Breitbart.com uh, also uh, today that's uh, a quote actually from GeneralDynamics.com that, uh, that the world view is that Sunni jihadists in Lebanon are preparing for war with Hezbollah. Hezbollah is the Shiite Muslim group based in Lebanon that basically runs Lebanon. Uh, and they've been helping uh, Assad in Syria with his uh, civil war. And now the Sunnis are uh, getting ready. Sunni jihadists in Lebanon are getting ready for war in Lebanon, which means Lebanon is going to fall into civil war like uh, Syria and Egypt is, is uh, you know, it's happening in those same places. And um, also... Uh, Speaking of Syria, the UN has registered the one millionth Syrian refugee in Lebanon. That's part of the problem. And there are refugees going into Lebanon and Jordan, destabilizing Lebanon and Jordan. Some of them are going into Turkey. Uh, it is a major international crisis. And of course, the red line that Obama drew ended up being drawn with invisible ink because Obama backed down. Uh, then going quickly to Egypt, um, they've been trying. Uh, former Muslim Brotherhood supporters of uh, former President Morsi, uh, 500 and some were condemned to death uh, uh, a week or so ago, and they're trying another 900 or so. And there's a story uh, in, uh, in uh, Times of Israel uh, uh, today saying that the brother of the Al-Qaeda chief is to stand trial in Egypt. Mohammed al-Zawahiri was arrested in August for supporting Morsi, and he will be tried with another 67 Muslim Brotherhood leaders and, and uh, Al-Qaeda leaders uh, for terror activity. Well, keep in mind, his brother is the head of Al-Qaeda now since bin Laden is dead. Um, and uh, I predict that this will create even more violence in Israel as uh, the general uh, al-Sisi is positioning. Well, he's resigned from being in the military. Now he's running for president of Egypt, and he's going to be a very fierce in a harsh leader, uh, I believe, according to Isaiah 19. A uh, quick comment on Turkey. They had their elections last week, and uh, as most people expected, uh, the Prime Minister Erdogan was strengthened. Uh, his party won just about everywhere. Uh, they, they needed to get about 39% of the vote 
to show their strength, they ended up with something like 45% uh, of the vote. And uh, so they're, he's basically uh, completely solid uh, to be, continue to be reelected and, and, uh, and continue to be the leader of Turkey. Um, then an item from Great Britain, the Prime Minister Cameron has ordered an investigation into the Muslim Brotherhood in Britain. Uh, a probe uh, amid the reports the group is planning radical activities based out of London. And uh, how did the Muslim Brotherhood react to that announcement? They actually threatened Great Britain. And they said, if you ban us, uh, violence will break out all over London and all over Britain. And, of course, that is the modus operandi, the MO of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, all around the world at these times. Um, there's a great article in Israel Today magazine about an Israeli lawmaker who was visiting the ancient site of Shiloh, or Shiloh, which is where when Joshua came across the Jordan and where they first set up the tabernacle. And it was actually in that place for the first 400 years that Israel was in the Holy Land. And uh, as this member of Knesset visited that spot for the very first time, it says he fell on his knees and prayed and led everybody with him to pray and thank God that they have the land back. And I just say, God bless him. Lord, be with Israel and let your peace be seen there. Um, his uh, name, he's a minister of Knesset named Amnon Cohen, a member of Shas, a religious party. But of course, Cohen means he's actually a part of the priestly tribe. And uh, I just praise God for that report. Uh, and then um, also uh, they've been finding more and more uh, archaeological finds. A spectacular mosaic was find, found uh, just recently from the Byzantine era. Uh, that's a beautifully preserved mosaic that was out in the desert of the Negev. Uh, and evidently there had been some monastery or something out there with this mosaic. And, and uh, they continue to find all the evidence of Israel's past. Well, I want to just finish with just a couple comments about the uh, tetrad, this, these moons, uh, the eclipses that are going on. There's an eclipse on Passover, which is a week from tomorrow night. Uh, and the eclipse can be seen in the United States, I understand. Uh, at like 3 o'clock in the morning uh, on uh, uh, Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday the 15th. And uh, it's going to be on this Passover and next Passover, and then it's going to be this fall on Tabernacles and next Tabernacles. And in between the two, uh, this year and next year, on March 20th next spring, a year from now, there's going to be uh, a total eclipse of the sun. And uh, all of these are signs in the heavens uh, without being able to, I'm not going to take too much time tonight to do into that. Maybe next week I'll say a little more. But um, the scripture that fits this is Luke uh, 21. And there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity. The sea and waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. So there are four things that are happening to the world. Signs in the heavens, perplexing, perplexing distress of nations, seas and waves roaring, hearts failing for fear. And then there's one thing that believers are supposed to do. Lift up your head for your redemption is drawing nigh. As you see these things begin to happen, lift up your head. This is not a time for gloom and doom. This is a time, as I like to say, for gloom and va-boom. Yes, there are going to be uh, terrible judgments in the earth. Satan is going to be loose to do uh, his evil. And yet at this very time, there's going to be the greatest revival, I believe, in the history of the world. And uh, the end of the book is that Jesus is coming back. The Messiah will uh, put his feet down on the Mount of Olives, as the Bible says in the Old and New Testament. The Messiah is about to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the encouragement there is as we study prophecy, Lord. We see the events that are transpiring, but they're all for a purpose, your purpose of redemption and salvation for everyone who will call on the name of Yeshua as the Messiah of Jehovah. Thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. See you next week. Bye-bye.